decided I wanted to do today was to give you guys my four favorite core exercises and um, explain to you the best way to be able to, to maximize them, to be able to get the greatest um, you know, benefit from them and little things that you may want to tweak that you probably aren't thinking about in order to make sure that you're incorporating the entire core versus you know maybe just the upper or lower part of the abdominals things like that so all of these things you should be able to do at home or um, with little equipment I do have some tools that I'll go over with you guys that I use that I feel like could make it a little bit more um, you know challenging of an exercise but there are a lot of other um, tools that you could use as impromptu um, pieces of equipment that can substitute the tools that I have that you could make it really easy to be able to do this at home. Okay, so my first, my favorite one is lying leg raises, okay? So if you happen to be at the gym and you have a Roman chair um, where you're able to, you know, where people call it, um, you know, like a dip chair, you can do like unassisted um, pull-ups or unassisted dips. A lot of times there's, um, you know, the Roman chair is the part where you prop yourself up and you're able to like um, lift your legs straight up or you can do hanging knee tucks instead. Um, but if you don't have that equipment, doing lying leg raises is another alternative. So I love these because they incorporate the entire entire abdominal sheath here, okay? So what I would suggest that you do when you do these is that when you're laying flat on the ground, first of all, you want to put your hands underneath your butt to be able to balance out this natural curve in your back. Um, if you have your arms out to the side, unless your core is really, really strong and you're able to push this lower back into the floor, you're not going to be able to um, protect your back during that time, okay? So I want you to make sure that you put your hands underneath your butt, okay? You're gonna think about pulling the belly button in towards the floor. You're going to start with your legs straight up, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you lower your legs slowly until you get to the point, and some of you guys may be strong enough that you're able to go, you know, basically one or two inches off the ground. But you get to the point where you lower your legs enough so that you feel like your um, back is starting to kind of lift off. Because that means that your core isn't strong enough to be able to stay engaged when you have all of this stress from gravity pushing on your legs, okay? So that's kind of how you should test how far you should go for lying leg raises, is when you lower down, if you feel that your back starts coming up or you have to roots around, that's when you want to make sure that you pull those legs a little bit further off the floor, okay? So, like I said, you want to lower down and back up. Keep the feet flexed or keep the feet pointed, but you want, um, you know, a strong emphasis either way, okay? And then you can have a slight bend in the knees, but you don't want them to get too bent, okay? Keeping a slight bend actually makes sure that the core is a little bit more engaged rather than, hold on, I have this coming up, okay? Um, make sure that your core is more engaged rather than um, just using your, your hip flexors for the strength there, okay? And then the third part I want to make sure you guys know about is keeping the head elevated. So a lot of times when people are doing lying leg raises, they'll be going down and the back's coming up here and all the way up and really where they start to feel it is more in the lower back instead of in the lower, you know, abdominal. and you don't feel like the upper part is engaged here. If you wanna use the entire abdominal sheath, which you don't really have upper abs and lower abs guides, it is one abdominal sheath and it's just which part you're kind of strengthening more because of what range of motion you're using. So if you're like this and you're just lifting the legs up and down, think like what the heck is this end doing? Nothing. So if you elevate your head, you're engaging that part of the abdominals as well. So if you wanna get the most benefit out of it, make sure that you incorporate the upper abdominals, okay? Heads elevated, we take the legs as far down as we can before the back comes off and back up, okay? So honestly, you could have at it with those. I usually do um, you know, different tempos. I'll do like a three second lowering and then come up, three second lowering, maybe hold it for three seconds at the bottom and come up. So depending on what your time under tension is, how slow you lower, how slow you raise back up, um, you, know, you could do anywhere from you know, 15 to 25 of those, or you could just time yourself. Do 30 to 60 second intervals and just keep going. Sometimes that's more tough than anything. Put on a good song though and you can bang them out. So that's one of my favorite ones. Second one is flutter kicks. So basically it's the same form that I just told you that I want you in your lying leg raises, except you're keeping those legs down the entire time, okay? So they're extended out in front of you. I'm gonna scoot back so you can see my feet. You have your feet flexed here, okay? And then just short little flutters. Some people call them swimmers. 
Um, but what I want you to make sure of is that when you start to get fatigued, a lot of times you'll see people just start kicking. This really isn't doing anything. So you might as well just put your feet down, relax, take a breath in, and then get started again, okay? But doing this quick motion is gonna make it more challenging. So if you're just starting off, just try and go slow to get the feel for it. And then as you feel like you're kind of starting to get that muscle memory there, start to flutter a little bit faster. Again, if you're going quick, I think it's easier if you just do some timed intervals. <laughs> so I would just do, you know, 30, 60 seconds, whatever you're able to do, okay? So my third one is the plank with abduction with the legs. So I'll show you what I mean by that. And there's two different ways that you could do it. So you can, I'm gonna go on an angle so you can kind of see where I'm coming from here. So go into your regular plank. Again, you want your um, elbow to be right underneath your shoulder here. You want this 90 degree angle. Lift up in that flat plank form. And then this kind of gets boring. If you're trying to you know, hold a 30, 60, 90 second, two minute plank, you know, it's almost like it's more um, difficult just because you're sitting there thinking about how you can't wait for it to be over, okay? So, I mean, you could have a good song on or whatever, but sometimes, you know, holding just one motion in that isometric contraction, it gets really boring and it seems harder than it really is. So, what makes it go a little bit faster and a little more interesting is if you are like abducting the leg. And when I say abduct, you're just bringing it out to the side. So everything is together right here. If you look at um, you know my right leg down here and I'm kind of bringing it out to a 45 degree angle, I bring it back in, bring the left one out, bring it back in. You, know, you don't need to bring it out all the way until like this L shape, okay? It's just slight. But then if you're just kind of tapping back and forth, you have to contract the core in order to counterbalance the fact that you're lifting up that foot and bringing it back in. It can make your plank go a little bit faster. So just saying it's a nice little thing to add in there. And um, you know, I like to do those for time and for reps as well. So you guys can play around with it. You know, get a little fun with it, get flexible, change it up every workout just so it doesn't seem as monotonous. But another way that you can do those, and this is the part that I love, and I'll explain what these are to you guys in a second, um, but I like doing the abducting plank with um, slides. So you can get discs, um, furniture discs sometime work, sometimes work. Um, these are called Val Slides, V-A-L-S-L-I-D-E. Um, this woman actually invented them so that um, it, was, it was honestly for like celebrities when they were trying to work out in their hotel rooms. And so this is actually plastic here, okay? So basically, if you wanted to put this on carpet and do lunges or something in a hotel room, you could because this is gonna slide on the carpet and you have very little equipment that you can do it in a hotel room. But when you have these slides, there's so many different ways that you can take one exercise and um, you know just make it versatile. So this slides on carpet, then they give you these little booties, for lack of better words, that you put on it with this material. And when you put this over top of the plastic, and you're on hardwood or um, you're on a specific type of like laminate or you know sometimes tile it kind of depends it just slides right on there so i'll show it back here okay so it makes things really really cool um, you have to incorporate a lot of different stabilizer muscles that you wouldn't have had to before and the difference between just picking up your foot to abduct versus sliding it out oh my god you'll feel the difference so before i had these and i knew they existed i used paper plates i had somebody tell me a few years ago why don't you try um you know just putting you know just the, the thick white paper plates underneath your foot they had some in the back in their lunchroom and i did and so i learned to do a bunch of different exercises just with paper plates or you can use um you know a, a dish towel or something if you're at home a lot of times the towels if they're um you know like cushiony enough will work and they'll slide. So you guys can be impromptu. That's why I'm saying you don't have to have these tools, but um, these clearly are a little bit more durable than um, some towels. So you can mess around with it, but okay. So doing abducting plank with the slides, so I'm gonna get in the same position, but instead of clearly bringing my foot up like this, I'm just gonna slide it out to the side and out to the side here. And I'm just, I'm telling you, it's a completely different feeling. So if you haven't tried these before, walk into the gym, with your paper plates, and when people ask what you're doing, say you're gonna get a really fit, tight, sexy core for this summer, <laughs> all right? And so then the sawing plank, um, literally like sawing, you do want to have slides for this. This isn't something that you can, um, you know, just incorporate with no towels or no sliding material. You have to be able to move back and forth. So, um, but you can do it with plates. I will say sometimes they stick a little bit more, but, Basically, you're going to get into that plank position here, okay? And when I say sawing, I'm saying literally like you're going back 
and you're pulling all the way forward here. So you start right in your regular plank. You want to push back so that you're extending back as far as you can before your butt dips to the ground, before your belly gives out. All right, and then you want to pull forward as far as you can without losing your form. So this gets tough because it's incorporating your arms as well, and sometimes they feel like they're going to give out before your core actually does. But those are some of my favorite ones, the lying leg raises, the flutter kicks, and then you have the abducting plank and the sawing plank. I like those a lot as well because they're working on the um, extensor muscles here. And you're, it really, it is a full body exercise, especially when you're doing that sawing plank. You are going to feel that in your delts on the side. You're going to feel it in your lats because you have to pull. So I love incorporating core exercises that involve more than one muscle group. Um, if you're just sitting there doing crunches, guys, Honestly, a lot of times um, you, you're going to get more of like that blocky look than like the lean fit look that you're looking for. It's just a totally different way to incorporate all the muscles. You're using the obliques, you're using the transverse abdominal versus just going one way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you try them out and uh, feel free to leave comments below if you have any questions and let me know how you feel after you do these. All right. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.